Building a set of bow rockers is not that difficult if you know how, and I'm going to show you coming up next. In my opinion, there's nothing prettier than a rocking horse sitting on a traditional set of bow rockers. Hi, I'm Brett. Welcome back here to the shop. If you've ever thought about building a traditional set of bow rockers but were possibly a little bit intimidated or you weren't really uh, sure where to begin, well stick with me. I'm going to show you some tips and some tricks on how to build these and you can make them perfect every time. One of the areas that make these bow rockers so challenging is that they're on a 10 degree angle. So your rockers are constantly laying flat on a hard surface and everything is at a 10 degree angle. So you have to make sure that all of your cuts are perfect and dead on. And if you do that and you follow the little tips that I'm going to give you, you're going to make perfect rockers every time. I have a really nice oak board pulled down. Unfortunately, it's a bit wide for my planer. I have a 15 inch planer. The board's around 20 inches wide. So I'm gonna throw it up here on the bench and then I'm gonna take my pattern and just kind of orient how I want the, the pieces to go on this board so I can cut it down to size. So let's get started there.
I've gone ahead and I've laid out my pattern with my template here on my oak for my small bell rockers. This is going to be important. I already set my bandsaw at the table at a 10 degree angle and so when we run these through we're going to have to kind of really pay attention. We want to run one bow through one direction and then we want to make sure we reverse and we run the bow the opposite direction. This is going to be a bit confusing and maybe it'll make a little bit more sense when you see me do it but because these bow rockers each rocker is on a 10 degree angle and these are in two pieces you want to make sure that that 10 degree angle is going the right direction and you don't cut it the opposite. Just kind of follow along with me here I'll cut it and we'll put it together then that'll probably make a little bit more sense when you see it done. So. Let's head over to the bandsaw. Back from the bandsaw, I've got these, I've got my bow rockers all cut out, my pieces all cut out. Everything's on a 10 degree angle. And as you probably watched, I would feed the pieces through one way, and then I would reverse, and the second piece would go in a different way. And that is again because these are on a 10 degree angle. And so if you do them all the same way, then that 10 degree, it's not going to line up. So when you put these two together, 
everything is going to line up nice and these bow rockers are going to lay flat when they're on a on the floor or on the hard surface the rock and everything touches at the same time next what i'm going to do is i just need to trim up so that these connect so i'm going to trim these up here on the miter saw and then uh, we'll start putting these bow rockers together Now that I have the ends all squared up on my uh, halves of my belt rockers, it's time to join these two halves together. The easiest way I found to do this is using my pocket hole jig. Uh, if you've never uh, had one of these or if you've never used one, I highly recommend picking one up. Uh, this is a pretty good one. I don't think they make this one. This is one of the first ones. It's all aluminum. But the other ones that they have out, Craig, uh, is what I use, the Craig manufacturer. Uh, this. Man, I'll tell you, these things work great and they're slick. So what I'll do is make sure that I'm on the inside of my bow rockers. I mark a little bit of an X right here or make a mark so that I know that's the inside so that when we go to finish these and we build the other part of the inside of this bow rocker, I cover that, that pocket hole up so we'll just bury that so you'll never even see it. So let's go ahead, I've got the jig all set up. Let's go ahead and make some holes. There we go, there's one. Put a little bit of glue on that joint right there, a couple of pocket hole screws. It makes it perfect and it makes it really strong. Now, we'll set this aside to dry. I'm gonna do the second one. Then I'm gonna show you another trick to these bow rockers. Okay, so here are both halves of my bow rocker. Now the little trick that I have kind of taught myself, this one's not looking too bad, but what I like to do is I'd like to take one and flip it over and then take the other one 
and put them together and then start lining them up and making sure that everything looks good. This is the way they're going to sit on the floor. So again, with a 10 degree angle, the way they're sitting. So they're tilted to the inside. My pocket holes are on the inside. So I put these together, line up my seams right here in the center, and then take a quick look. Because this is where I can make my adjustments. This one's not too bad. This one is sitting just a bit high over here. I'll spin it around so you can see it. Again, lining up my, my two seams here, lining that up this end. You can see that this is off just a little bit, which tells me I can undo these screws right here and maybe cut this joint just on one side, cut it just a little bit, and I can bring maybe this one up to match. So let's go ahead and do that. Just taking that little, about a half a degree is all it really took to make sure that I am perfectly lined up right here. It's a little bit high again, but I've still got all of the sanding to do, but it is really, really close. And I think this is gonna work out really, really well. So next what we're gonna do, we'll set this aside to dry. We're gonna make our cross pieces and I call this part the box. So we're gonna build our box next and then some other tricks here on how to get these bows just perfect. All right, it's been a few hours now and I've let these bow rocker sides uh, go ahead and dry completely. While that was happening, I went ahead and I cut the middle pieces and I also cut my two, we'll call these stretchers, just like a chair that go in between the two bow rockers to give us our distance. So I've got these cut, and again, I cut these with the scraps left over from when I cut the bow rockers. So one end already had the 10 degree bevel already cut into it. And so my trick is, and this is my tip and trick, I've done a lot of these bow rockers over the years. And again, what we're, what we're shooting for is we want these bow rockers to be absolutely perfect. So when they're sitting flat on the floor, both your ends are nice and in perfect on either end they match it starts it all starts right here and so I call this the box we're gonna build the box the center section of our bow rockers and so it's basically gonna go something like this so this center and I'll call this the cleat our center center cleat here I've gone ahead and I've cut and I always make this wide I really kind of taught myself this a few years ago this really really helps when you're building these and this is really does help when you want to try to make these perfect so make this part wide it's about a half an inch wider all the way around and I mark my center line on it so I can get this centered up with the seam I lay that down and take a spring clamp and clamp it in place just temporarily then I can go ahead and I can take a look and see what the adjustment is this side here needs to come down a little bit and that looks pretty close right there the idea is now I can go on and go ahead and build this center section or the box let me do that and I'll come back and then I'll show you where we're at at that point
Okay, so here is our box all screwed together complete. Of course, I did not glue this together. This is all just dry fitting at this point. Now, two things to note when building these, you have to put a back bevel on your cleat because if you don't, your stretchers, this part in the center is going to want to work your, its way in because again, we're dealing with compound angles. These are all cut on a 10 degree angle and as the bow rockers from the center to the end, they're going to start to narrow. And so you're, this is going to have to be cut on a back bevel and I mean just a half a degree, just a little bit. So I've taken it over to the belt sander already and I've already back beveled them. So when you do that and you attach your stretchers now this part right here is high so again we're gonna have to make sure that this is all absolutely flat so I'm gonna head back over to my belt sander and I'm gonna run it over here and just hit these edges and again we're just we're dealing with maybe half a degrees I mean it's not much but it's enough that it's gonna throw everything off that's how precise these bow rockers are that's why whenever I get an order for a glider rocker or a safety stand you know I'm kind of like all right because they're a lot easier to build these are real finicky anyways let's head over to the belt sander and we'll just hit these real quick we'll come back over and put this together now I'm just gonna let you know I already did tilt my table on my belt sander just just a little bit so we're just gonna touch these and and clean these up right here temporarily get everything lined back up again make sure my center line is lined up with the seam of my bow rocker and I do want to point out too even my cleats or my stretchers going across here are a bit wide uh, wider than what they need to be and again the goal is is to get this center section glued down tight but I want to make sure everything is even first another little little tip pretty good now again here's another little trick that I do I'm fortunate that I have a workbench that is long enough these are small bow rockers so they fit on here nice but when you get into a medium horse you, those are six foot long and it just barely fits now since I've added my toolbox here it gives me another 30 inches or so so I'm good there but normally I just have just enough room for the medium bow rockers because again they're six foot long the little trick is I flip these upside down which makes the bottom part of these you know perfect and now I can kind of look down the end of it and see if they might be you know whopper jawed these look really good and again this is why it's so critical that when you first assemble these bow rockers that you put them together once you get them assembled and take a look and see if they're close down here at the ends because if they're off just a little bit that's going to throw this all off it's critical that every step of these bow rockers is absolutely perfect and dead on and if you do that this will all go together and and they'll look fantastic by the end by the time we're done so i believe now we can go ahead and uh, i'm just going to do one side at a time 
time I'm going to glue up on the inside here. I'm going to take the spring clamps, put the spring clamps back in place. Then I'm going to take my good heavy wood clamps and then I'm going to really clamp these down nice and tight and let those sit overnight. And then we can come in tomorrow, take the stretchers off, then we can trim everything up on the bandsaw and there you go. So I hope that helps. If you know of a better way to do these, please by all means comment below. You know, let me know how you build your bell rockers. I'd love to know. But this to me, this is about the easiest way and the best way that I found to get perfect bow rockers every time. There we go. All we need to do now is just let this set aside to dry overnight. Tomorrow again, we'll come back. We'll take the clamps off, run these through the bandsaw, and then we can start sanding and really start fine tuning on this little bow rocker. The next day. Well, good morning. We're back and we're ready to take the clamps off our small bow rocker. And then I have another one that I cut out because remember when I'm cutting one out, I might as well cut two or uh, three out. So I've got another one in the wings. I'm going to take the clamps off this one and then we'll get started on the second one. We'll get that put together and then we'll jump back to this one and then we'll finish building this small bow rocker. Moving forward with our small oak bow rockers, if you remember, we've gone ahead, we've glued up our cleats to the center of our rockers. The stretchers, what we're calling the stretchers on this side, these are not glued in, they're only screwed in. And that, again, is done so that we can take this all apart. And now that we have these all glued, move my screw gun here, this section here that we cut wide, our cleats we did cut wide so that we could level up our bow rockers. We can now run over and run them through the bandsaw again and we can get everything trued up and then get ready to sand. Now, a little tip is I always mark my cleats and my stretchers so that I know when I'm ready to reassemble, I'm ready to put that back in. And it's probably wise to not only mark it where you can see it, but I also mark them on the inside because I'm not gonna be sanding that part. And the same with the cleats on the rockers. I'll just put a mark there so that I know which one goes where.
Okay, those are apart. And again, you can get a good idea of what I talk about when I make the cleat section wider. And you can really see how much more I've got to cut off. But again, my bandsaw is all set up with a, at a 10 degree angle. The table's still set, so it won't be any big deal just to run over, make a couple of passes, and get these all trimmed up. Back from the bandsaw, I have my rocker clamped in my vise on my bench, and now I'm going to start sanding this and get this all smoothed out and start getting it looking good. The best way, again, I found how to do this, my belt sander. So I'll just use my belt sander and run up and down it and around the ends, and then we'll flip it upside down to the other side, and then we'll do the other one.
finishing up sanding on our little bow rockers and I'm just about ready to start doing the assembly on these. One of the things that I had made years ago is I had a uh, my logo machined into a uh, wood burning block so that I can burn my logo into each one of the, uh, the pieces that I make. Not only do I sign each one, I always sign my, put my signature underneath the saddle because I think that's about the best place on the horse to put it, plus it's protected there. And then on my gliders and on my rockers, I always use the wood burning. I burn in my logo on the bottom side. One of the other details that I do when I do this, I need to know the front and the back because when I go to mount the horse to this I've got to cut in the hooves so the hooves are gonna have to be cut into this and those are real tricky so that's coming up and I'll show you how I do that and then once I take it off and then I take everything in the paint booth and I start painting and staining and you know clear coating then I can't remember which way uh, the the or the orientation which way the horse should go on what's the front and what is the back so if I burn it in my logo then I know normally I put that to the front and so then I know my front legs need to go to the side that the uh, I burn my logo in but just a little little detail that I do and just so that I know the reference that I use so I'll go ahead get this plugged in and we'll get that heated up burn my logo in and then we'll finish assembling Now that we have our little bow rockers glued up permanently, we can set these aside to dry for a few hours. Then we'll come back and we'll pull the lathe out. We're gonna make our two turnings for the ends and then we'll start making our slats and we'll get those put down. But for now, we have other things to work on. I have the other small bow rockers I wanna start standing. And then I also have the two six foot cherry bow rockers that we have to work on.
Now with our turnings turned, I've gone ahead and I've cut them and, and was able to fit them to the ends of our rockers. And I'm just looking down and lining up this one with the far one and they look to be pretty much dead on. So we're good there. Next up, we're gonna be cutting our slats for the base of our rocker. We're almost done with this, this little project here. I've gone ahead and I planed down some material. I've got it down to three quarters of an inch. We need nine of these slats. I've set my stop over at my miter saw and my station. So I'm ready to go ahead and start cutting these slats. Our slats are all cut. Now what we need to do is cut them so that there's a bit of a taper to the top of these because again, our rockers kind of fit at a taper. They're about 12 inches here at the widest part and they go down to around seven and a half inches at the ends of our rocker. So there's a slight taper to these rockers. Again, we're dealing with compound angles. So when I make my slats, I like to cut them and just take a degree off of each slat so that they kind of form and take the same shape as the rockers. So again, stick with me here. I'll show you how I do that. But for, for now, what I need to do is go ahead and get our first three cut and we'll do that first. And we'll go ahead and get those secured down. When I do this, I just use nails. I use brad nails on my small bow rockers. On the six foot, on the larger rockers, I do screw them down. But for my small bow rockers, nails brad nails work just fine for this with a little bit of glue so let's go ahead we'll head over to the router table we'll knock the edges off of these three and then we'll come back get those secured down and then we'll start fitting the rest of our of our slats Over here at my router station, I've gone ahead and I've set the height of my router bit. We're just gonna knock the edges off of these slats. So I've gone ahead and I made a couple of test runs here and I've got the height where I want it. So it's just a matter of running these, these three through the router table and we'll get those all shaped up.
And there it is. There's our little bow rocker. It's pretty well finished up. I have the plugs to put on the ends. I'm going to do that after I sand. I'll give this all another quick sand. I'm going to fill in my little uh, nail holes here left behind from the Brad gun. I'll get those all filled. Give this a final sand and we'll take it into the paint booth. This little rocker is going to get clear coat, so we're keeping it natural. That's what the client wants. So we'll keep it a nice natural finish. We'll take it in and uh, we'll get it sprayed. Well, now that my hang tag is in place, we'll call this little horse complete. Well, I hope you've really enjoyed watching me make this set of bow rockers. And if you get the opportunity and you're able to make some yourself, well, I hope maybe some of the tips and some tricks that I showed you throughout this video, you're able to apply to your own project. Thanks again for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, think about giving it a thumbs up and also think about subscribing. You can check me out on Instagram at Greenfield Woodworks. Of course, I have a Facebook page, Greenfield Woodworks, and my website, greenfieldwoodworks.com. We'll see you here at the shop next week.